Hello, and welcome, friends. Tonight, it's mail night. And I'm not talking about some sort of a Chippendales review or anything. I'm talking about things from the post office. Let me get you guys over here to the main screen. I got it all tipped over. I don't know what we got yet. I don't know what we got, so let's check it out. First things up, Magic Johnson. This might be one of our Magic Johnsons from that crazy avalanche of value uh, that hit the other day. And uh, a little bit of word on these. So the two PSA 10s that were up there ended for about $300 a piece. So if we follow the, the 10 to 1 ratio, then that means this is about a $30 card. However, since Prism uh, tends to gem mint more often than other sets, this could be more valuable, like a $60 or a $70 card. Uh, it's hard to say. All I know is that there's one up for auction right now that's got bids on it at $35. Either way, this was a great pickup. If you guys got in on that with me, that's fantastic. Uh, glad to have you on the team. So there's Magic Johnson, 2012 Prism, and that is going to go straight into the PSA grading stuff. Uh, this is this is de decently done, right? You know, uh, freezer tape and whatnot. Try to jam that down. I, I don't mind when it's got freezer tape on it. I mean, obviously, freezer tape's not bad. Uh, this is well done with the two uh, to protect Kareem Abdul-Jabbar in the middle. Looks like we have a 1986. Kareem Abdul-Jabbar sticker. Uh, I picked this up because the centering was slightly better than it normally is, and this card is very difficult uh, to get with good centering. Unfortunately, that top right corner is kind of dinged up. This is a tough card, guys. Very tough card to get in good condition. Uh, I'm just assuming that this one is close to a 6, something like that, uh, with that corner ding. If this corner was not dinged up, we'd be probably looking at somewhere near a 7-ish. Uh, but nonetheless, still a nice card to pick up. I think the reason why I picked this one up is because it was $11. I bought this for 11 bucks, and you can sell it raw like this for like $30 or $40. So that's not a bad deal. Uh, pretty nice flip. So not a bad card to pick up. We got Magic. We got Kareem. We got some trash. All right. Who's who's over here in this one? Oh, oh it's that 2007 Tops Chrome. First Chrome Magic Johnson card. One of the hottest cards out there right now. I don't know if you guys have heard or if you were made aware, uh, but that's a very, very nice card. Hey, it looks like he sent the wrong card. Is that the right card? Did you send the right card? You didn't send me the right card. This is not the card. Uh, this is supposed to be the Magic John. Let me let me see if it's in here, man. Hold on. Yeah, it's not. It's not in here, guys. The card that this is supposed to be is not this 1985 version. The card it's supposed to be, as you know, is the version of uh, this card over here, right there. Well, which we'll get to in a minute, because I did pick up a couple of very nice cards to add to my PSA stock. Uh, nonetheless, this was the first order I got for six of these Magic Johnsons. Very nice card, honestly. Having them in my hand is even, it makes me even happier. Uh, that's a beautiful card. And before you savages go out there and get all these, uh, Larry Bird, that's his first card also. And I just wanted to, like, let you guys know, because I haven't bought as many as I wanted these. So back the up, up, man. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Uh, you know, you can. <laughs> You can go grab all these if you want to, but don't expect Larry Bird to get as much attention as Magic Johnson, both because Magic Johnson is a more popular player, but the Lakers are winning the championship and the Lakers in general uh, versus the Celtics. The Lakers are the most popular team in all of history. So, uh, yes, we got some nice Magic Johnson 2007 Topps Chrome. In case you guys didn't see what these cards look like, and I am going to try to send some to grade but these do look really nice on the back because it's very it's very difficult. As you guys know, if you sent in Kevin Durant rookie cards, I literally have 19 of these 2007, not chrome, God, good God, no. I'd be rich, but I have 2007 tops, white, black, whatever uh, border variation of those Kevin Durant cards over there. So I have almost 20. Actually, I mean, I have more than that with other versions of cards, but nonetheless, yeah. So uh, they screwed this one up. I'm going to have to message them and let them know that that was incorrect. Nonetheless, we do get these others. And these Larry Bird cards are attractive as well. But that is a very attractive Magical Johnson. All right. So what's the next one we've got? And we can move on to our PSA. So you, you done screwed up. You done. And you guys saw it right here. Bam. And here's another thing. I know that you guys use 
top loaders over again, but there's no like unwritten law that you have to use these nasty dog piss stained top loaders because it doesn't look good to customers. As a card guy, I understand it, right? So I'm not going to get mad. Yeah, it's the wrong card. I wish it was the right card. We'll fix that. I'm not going to get mad because it looks like his dog blew his nose on here. I saw Turner and Hooch. I was down with Canine when I was a kid. Lady in the Tramp. But this this is deplorable look at this look at the condition of this man people are out there worried about presidential debates look at this top loader all right what's hidden in here i don't know this one's got a nice piece of paper wrapped up and then maybe some tape around it wait a screwdriver okay no screwdriver uh god guys how do i how do i get into this okay okay who is it Ugh. Oh, oh, it's Magic Johnson. It's like I opened up a pack. Oh, yeah, very nice. So this was a very nice Magic Johnson that I, I spotted on eBay for $3, and I grabbed this one up. I think that you should be picking up these Magic Johnson cards. I think 1986 Fleer and, you know, and sticker, obviously. Uh, 1987 Fleer and sticker. 1988 Fleer, sticker less, but yes, still sticker. Uh, All-star card, whatever. Those are to a lesser extent. But you ought to be picking up these Magic Johnson cards because they're just going to go uh, the way of the Dodo. They're going to get more expensive as we get closer to that documentary, as the Lakers just, you know, keep getting hyped up or whatever. Uh, it's just a card that you want to have as many of as you possibly can if you're trying to make money flipping cards so this right here i picked up for three dollars and it is a little bit off center but it doesn't really have print defects and that is something that is very tricky for 1988 fleer first of all let me just go on record this is one of my favorite magic or not Magic Johnson cards, but this is one of my favorite basketball card sets. I love the color. I love the border, like the gradient and everything. It's just a very attractive card to me, and I know some people don't like it, but if you're out there and you like fancy sneakers with all those butterflies and daffodils, I don't know if it's a sneaker or a Pokemon holofoil. That's the kind of shit I'm talking about. That's the kind of Magical Johnson I'm interested in, so I really do like that design. Now, who do we have over here? Because this don't even look right. Ronald Acuna Jr. Flip it over. Bam! Who is that? Alfaro. Alfaro? That better not be Faro from the truth. This better be who I ordered, man. No more of that nonsense. Bam! Acuna Jr. Guerrero. What is this? Baseball card day. Oh, he just gave me a bunch. Oh, it's another Magic Johnson prism card with some free shit in the middle. Cool. Can't complain about that. Always nice to get some filler. Another attractive Magic Johnson Prism card. Like I said, I will run these through the PSA if they look crisp. Now is the time to send your cards in if you want them back in time for the documentary. Uh, there's another card. If you guys are looking for buys, you're on there and you're like, what the hell is he doing? Uh, if you're looking for a hot buy, I wouldn't say this is a hot buy, but it's almost guaranteed that this is going to be a bump whenever the shit goes down. You better be ready. You feel me? That's right. It ain't just Cypress Hill. You better be ready. It, it, it is going to be the uh, the Hall of Fame announcement. So you're going to get Paul Pierce, Chris Bosh, Guys like that, you can go pick up their rookie cards, relatively dirt cheap. Paul Pierce kind of had a little hype for a bit, but he keeps smacking down LeBron in the media. And nobody likes him anymore. But nonetheless, when the Hall of Fame rolls around, I don't know if that's going to come out before the documentary or after, but that is going to be one little catalyst that you might want to get into. You get some graded Bosch, you get some 2003 Tops Bosch, whatever. You're probably going to be able to two or three extra money pretty easily uh, at the height of the Hall of Fame stuff. But it's not something that you're most likely going to look to uh, for a long-term investment for those guys. Maybe Pierce if you're a fan a little bit. I picked these up tonight. Uh, these are very attractive cards. Beautiful shape. Unfortunately, obviously the centering is a big issue for 1981 tops. I'll show you guys the other ones I have in just a second. But this one ended up having a ding. You guys see that right under the E down there on the card? It's hard to see. But there's a little bit of a ding down there. Other than that, and the centering, this is an extremely sharp, beautiful card. You guys can see that there's not much wear on the corners. Uh, hard to get this so that you guys can see it uh, pretty well focused. But yeah, so that was a, a card that we picked up this evening. And then we picked up, I swear, one of the most beautiful Kareem Abdul-Jabbar cards that I've seen. One of the most 
one of the cleanest 1986 Fleer cards I've seen. The centering is just a slight bit off top to bottom, but look at how sharp the corners are, guys. There's not much wear on these corners at all. And I know that you guys can't see exactly up close, but even if you could, even in this blurry mess, there's just not much wear. I mean, it's super clean. I'm not one to call my shots exactly, but I believe we should be pretty close to getting a 9 on this card, unless I'm missing something. The surface looks clean, the corners are super sharp, everything looks very nice, and we're only off-center a hair top to bottom. If that was centered better, I would say we'd have a shot at a 10 on this, which is kind of crazy. Uh, but yeah, this card in particular, since it's card number one in that set, for whatever reason, uh, other than the centering issues this set had, they're just constantly destroyed, man. People, people are chewing on them. Those little, you know, infants with their butter cookies just dribble and drool all over these cards. And I don't know how they got that way. How did you give them to your kid? A bike spoke makes sense. You were eight at the time. You had a paper route. You couldn't afford much, so this was your entertainment. Blah, 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 blah. But when you're older, you're 42, 42 year old man, give him, give him the butter cookie. Don't let him chew on your Kareem Abdul Jabbar card. So those two are awesome, and those are going into my PSA lot. So I'm going to show you guys what my next PSA order is setting up to be. And we're just going to kind of th go through there really quickly, and I'm going to bounce up out of here, try to make this kind of a quickish video. 2010 Don Russ, Kobe Bryant. Pick this one up. Looks pretty minty fresh to me. I think it's overall a very attractive card. I think it's Don Russ, uh, their first foray into the basketball. Maybe, I can't remember any other Don Russ basketball cards. I think this might have been the first year Don Russ was a thing. Either way, it mimics the 1984 baseball uh, Don Russ, and it's quite attractive. So I kind of like this. I like Kobe's face and all these. He's always like, yo, raw. You know, he's always jamming down on some attractive thing with his mouth open, just ready to just spit on somebody, I guess. I don't know. Either way, the Mamba. This is uh, an attractive card. Not much else to say about that. So we've got that. And then we've got the 1981 Topps Larry Bird card. Again, I've been picking these up, uh, trying to get them as centered and as sharp as I can. Uh, as you guys can see, this is a very sharp card. I think I picked this one up for about $50, which is, again, kind of the top of what I would pay for one of these cards. But there's not there's a printing dot here all the time. Uh, I don't think either of the copies that I have has the printing dot but there's oftentimes a printing dot up here and the centering is crazy uh if i'm lucky i can get a nine on this but uh, I'm, I'm just assuming for all the cards here that are vintage i'd like to get a, an eight or better uh unless it's an older one a seven or better like this one has slightly worse centering uh but the corners are sharp and the card overall is quite attractive so that's not a bad one and then this magic johnson can go right in the stack with the rest of them <clears throat> because we have well I would like to continue to pick them up obviously as we go but they are a bit off of the charts now value wise so I have four of the ones that I picked up off eBay uh, again generally we're going to have a little bit of a centering issue but generally the surfaces are good and the corners are sharp the back of the car does look sharp uh, there's a bit of a, of a ding or a little bit of a wear on the back of this one but um, but nonetheless, I mean, we have a good shot at sevens or or eights for these. And, and honestly, you're rarely going to find a nine of this card. The, the the population is extremely low and it's worth a couple thousand dollars. Uh, this one would be utterly beautiful. It didn't have this print mark right there. So hopefully I can still get an eight on this with that print. Uh, if there's anything else wrong with the card, it'll likely be a seven. But honestly, it looks quite clean. So it's, you know, we'll just kind of not get our hopes up and go from there. Uh, so again, another, this one is probably the worst centering out of all of them, and it's got a little bit of, of chipping as well, uh, but nonetheless, an attractive card. And I'll go through a little bit quicker for you guys. So we got some Julius Irving. I think these are also, good. The, the four big guys you wanna pick up back in those days in this era is Julius, Kareem, Magic Johnson, Larry Bird. Uh, unfortunately, there's not too many cards to pick up <laughs> for those guys since they started in 80. 81 and you know and then basketball kind of shit the bed here's a pretty clean i think it's a 1979 yeah the year of my birth i was born in 1979 this is a very clean 1979 julius irving i think i paid like 10 or 12 bucks for this 
got it on eBay. Uh, centering looks good. I really do like this set, and it's got the same kind of border that the 72 does, where it's like a, a thin border uh, with a black line or whatever, and then like another line of white with the white on the outside. Just an attractive card overall, and he's about to jam this Wes Unseld bro down. I mean, look at that. That's like a wall, dude. It's like playing Team Fortress or some shit. Fortnite? No, Julius Irving. That's going to bring us to Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. And I got a couple more of these that aren't as nice uh, out there floating around. But yeah, I try to get these as nice as we can. Just an attractive set of basketball cards overall. Try to get them nicely centered. Been paying around 8 to $10 for nice ones here. Uh, there was a dude that had a plethora of them. He had tons. But um, yeah, I think we'll throw this other one in here whenever we get around to it as well. But I, I honestly, with the corner ding on the back of that one, I don't think I'm going to end, end up doing anything with it. Uh, this is, again, going to be another low-grade card. But nonetheless, I'd rather have it slab than not. Uh, it is a very tough grade. The corners on this one are way better, uh, other than that back centering, which hopefully is still good enough for a 9-1. to one. Hopefully, we can get somewhere around the 6 range. I'm looking for a 6 on the Kareem Abdul-Jabbar of the, the sticker variety. And I already had this Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, but you can see there's a little bit of white there still pretty nice centering uh, i only paid twelve dollars for this so i'm extremely happy with that purchase the back is very clean uh, i would be lucky if i got an eight on this i think it's closer to a seven uh, maybe a six and a half uh, with the corner dings but nonetheless the nonetheless the centering is good and hopefully we can kind of climb up over that but this one guys and gals this one is so beautiful god there's just nothing wrong with this i mean no shot at a 10 i don't think uh, with the centering top to bottom, it's a little bit off. But if we can get a 9 on that, that would be absolutely beautiful. Uh, I probably have three or four of these Magic Johnsons already at PSA. This one I kind of gambled on a little bit that I might be able to get a, a 7 or rather an 8, uh, even with this centering, which is very close. I think it's just enough for an 8, but at the same time, uh, even if we get a 7, uh, that would be fine with me. The rest of the card is extremely sharp the corners are good other than the centering the surface is good you know there's not a lot of chipping or wear uh, and that is always something to be aware of that's going to bring us to a nice michael jordan 1988 again beautiful beautiful set to me uh, the corners and the sides aren't bad usually right in this area on 1988 fleer you have a lot of edging issues so you have to watch for that i don't know why it's always the the right edge but if you look on ebay and you're looking through the cards uh if you notice this isn't on the card by the way that's not he doesn't have like a you know he's not eating food or doesn't like a grape or something up there on the right side is where you usually find the wear. I don't know if it's because people pick it up with this hand or what, but that's how you usually find them. So this is a little bit off-centered, but generally a pretty attractive Jordan card. I think we paid 60 bucks for this. Uh, if I got an 8 on this, it would be cool. I'm kind of shooting for a 9 or an 8.5 on this one, but basically 8 is the baseline uh, in this condition. You know, Generally pretty good on corners, centering, etc., cetera, etc., cetera. Uh, enough for an eight anyway attractive card this just looked gem mint so i picked it up at a local baseball card show for like two bucks or something like that shining moments again all these random inserts and you know subsets and things like that if they're attractive and if it looks really minty fresh no reason why you shouldn't just run it through a bulk order or something for 10 bucks it's going to bring us to a couple of stockton rookies uh picking these up in around the 15 dollar range or by buying sets in the $200 range, and you can see this one has that that rough right edge we were talking about. Centering's a little bit off on this, probably closer to an eight. You know, we'd be lucky to get a nine, uh, but it's better slab than not, and it's still profitable, especially if you only paid like 15 bucks for it. This one has better centering, uh, good corners, little bit of edging on the right there, but this one I believe we could get a nine on, so this one will probably be closer to 150 bucks you know, for like 35 bucks, all inclusive with grading. But the back is quite clean other than they're a little bit of a, of a, of a dark, weird blurb, I don't know, blob, blurb, blurb. It's like a blob down here. I'm not sure. It shouldn't be that bad though. Uh, maybe we'll get an eight for that. Nonetheless, we didn't pick these up for that much. They're attractive. Not bad. 
We picked this up for $100. Like I told you guys, when the whole world went crazy and, and Giannis got bounced and I said that it was a good buying opportunity, we didn't have that many uh, show up. Everybody kind of kept it around the $200 range. We saw some end for $130, $150, but I did pick up this crisp one uh, for $99.99. And there is a bit of of a fuzzy edge way down at the bottom left, but this should be a nine at least. The centering is, is a little off, not gonna get a 10. Uh, and again, if I got eight or eight and a half, that would be fine. I picked this Russell Westbrook rookie card. It was another guy I told you guys went down. Uh, we picked this up for 12 bucks. I don't expect this to grade high, uh, just an eight or probably, probably an eight. I uh, don't think it would be a seven. There's not that much wrong with it. Just a little bit of a ding back there, uh, but that's what I'm basically looking. I just want it slabbed. Nice Jokic. Uh, I got a couple of these already over there. Not much to say about it. We picked up a Jokic in good condition for cheap. That's going to bring us to these 2014 Prism Silvers. Uh, variation, short print. You know, if you pick up Magic Johnson, that's probably a good pickup as well. I was looking at them, and they are attractive cards. And I do believe that if they had a little bit more attention on these, like if more people knew about them, then they would have their day. So this is a card that could easily have its day given its short printed nature. Uh, there's a Kevin Durant, and there's two James Hardens. And by the same token, I know everybody's really into the Kaboom cards. I think the Kaboom cards are very attractive. I mean, there's even a Magic Johnson Excalibur Kaboom card that's really rare that goes for hundreds. So good luck, good luck, good luck. Goulash. You ever have to eat goulash? I'll tell you what, my, there's a little quick aside here. When I was younger, my mother had a couple of things that we had to eat, and I wasn't happy with either of them. The first one was called shit on a shingle. She would take hamburger, put it in a skillet like it was about to be hamburger helper, but it wasn't. It wasn't. She didn't have hamburger helper. There was no box full of pasta. She would make a gray gravy out of sludge and dirt. She'd be out in the yard, boom, fistful of dirt, whew, right in the skillet. What is it? It's shit on a shingle. And she would take that nasty gray gravy with all that hamburger and she would put it on a white piece of bread and make you eat it. I'd rather sit at the table not eating my eggplant dinner, but now I got shit on a shingle and the other one was called goulash. Why? I don't know. It was just a bunch of pasta with a bunch of chunky weird vegetables and other things that I didn't want to eat. You know, it was like a tomato sauce. I don't know, just like poor white trash food on the East Coast. But let me know down below if you guys had to eat either of those things. All right, let's go back over to the card packs things. Boom. We got Tim Duncan Kickstart. These are attractive, these kickstarts. I got a couple of Kobe's that are up at PSA for grading right now. Uh, there's, it's only a matter of time, man. These cards are dirt cheap. I think you can get this Tim Duncan card for like two bucks or something. They're not the easiest cards to pull. I mean, you get them, but like, I don't know. There's just attractive. Like, look at it. That's what you want in a card. It's flashy. It says something, Whoa, some kung fu. Uh, and Tim Duncan is about to beast somebody. And maybe that's his nut sag. Is that a, where did, the, where did that big ball come from? Fix your shorts. We've got Jamal Murray. Uh, there's no specific rhyme or reason for this. It just looked minty fresh. I picked it up for like six bucks, and it's a very attractive card. These select tricolor cards, some of my favorite cards uh, from, you know, that's an attractive type guy. Uh, so I grabbed that. Last but not least, we've got four Jamal Murrays that are minty fresh. Uh, of the Don Russ variety. Paid about 15 bucks a piece for those, which is just a hair under market. Uh, and we're just gonna send them off for grading, ready for next season, because that is when you want to prepare for. You wanna send all your Bull Bulls, all your RJ Barretts, all those guys that you wanna have when the season kicks in, you wanna send them off now. And if it's a better or a higher end card, you probably wanna pay for economy. Don't do bulk, you won't see that shit until like April or May at this point, if you're lucky. So you want to prepare, but you know, be be vigilant in sending in for 20 and not for 10. Use that economy. And then the last couple, uh, 2012 Mike Trout baseball card, not a bad guy. And this is a very attractive Nolan Ryan Elite Dominator. This card goes for like 70 bucks or something. Numbered 3248 out of 5,000. 
Very attractive card. Looks like it'll be close to getting a 10, uh, and that would be quite sweet. So the last thing I wanted to share with you guys uh, about those Prism and those Chrome uh, Magic Johnson cards, there's a bunch of refractors out there, and one thing that I did pick up of the 2007 variety, uh, I don't have it here yet because I didn't get it in the mail yet, but I picked up one of these 2007 refractors, and I picked that up for $38. Beautiful card, and on the back, it's numbered at a 999, but mine was number like X32. It was like 132 or 432 or something like that. I got his jersey number on the refractor, which makes those... Uh, you know, people read into that type. It's like superstition, you know what I mean? It's like you, you, you drink the blood of a goat for good luck. Who doesn't? So I'm looking for a jersey number on the back of a refractor. It's the same damn thing. Dummy.